everybody, SoCal Thero here, and in today's tutorial, we're going to go over three uh, important files for vehicles for GTA 5. We have the Carcals file, which I mentioned in the non ELS video that I did, that we'll go over. We have the Car Variations meta and the Vehicles meta. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I'll do the Carcals last. I'll try to remember to leave timestamps in the description below if you're looking for a specific meta to go over, okay? Uh, first one though is going to be the vehicles.meta. So this is your vehicles meta here. It has a few different things in it. I'm gonna try to go over what each line does to the best of my knowledge. Um, not all of it I know, and some of it I might get wrong. So I do apologize in advance if I do get something wrong here. So first things first, this is the model name. So this is the spawn name that you want to use. So in my case, I have it called uh, Tutorial. So if you look here, the vehicle name is Tutorial, which is the CBPI I've been working on for these tutorials. Next is this text name here. This is the name of the texture file. I always try to keep it the same, so it's called Tutorial as well. Next is the handling ID. This is the name of the handling line that you wanted to follow. So in the case of this, it's using the default police one. You can make your own custom handling line and a handling meta. I unfortunately do not know handling lines enough to know how to go over that meta. So that I sadly will not be able to go over with you guys here. Uh, next is the game name. This is what it says in the game when you spawn it. In this case, it'll say tutorial. Vehicle make name, you can put what you want here. Uh, sometimes I put Ford just because it's a CVPI. It just makes it easier when I'm doing a big project. Um, this stuff here, I do not know. Um, in animation, roof, dirt. yeah, none of this stuff I know. I'm assuming this has something to do with uh, convertibles, but again, don't hold me to it. I'm going to jump down to the next thing here that I know. Audio name hash. This is the sound that the vehicle makes as far as the engine goes. I'm sure all of you are familiar with it that like to change yours out. Like as an example, most people take police to or the Dodge Charger and they change it to the Windsor. So that way it has that nice throaty V8 sound. That's where you make that change at. Next is the layout. This is how the um, ped enters the vehicle. This one is called layout standard. There's a few different ones you can find a list online that will um, tell you, or you could just look in the default vehicle meta and you'll see all the different ones and which vehicles they go with. Um, some have only two doors opening, some have four doors opening, some have uh, two front passengers, and then it warps the rest of the passengers in the back, such as the um, tour bus. And uh, so on and so forth. Uh, cover bound offsets, no idea what that does. Explosion info, I'm assuming that's how the vehicle explodes. I just leave that on default. Scenario layout, I have no idea what that does. Follow vehicle camera, this is the camera view um, that is, I believe, behind the, the um, vehicle. So I try to keep this as default just so that way you're not aiming or changing... Uh, between the different ones there when uh, within your settings if it's sitting way too high or sitting way too low I could be wrong on that one though. These are ones. I usually don't touch um, This is the aim camera for I'm assuming for drive-by shootings if you're shooting out of the car bonnet camera, this is the camera if you're uh, If you're in first person and you're not looking at uh, the dash itself Point of view camera name default point of view. I have no idea what that does uh, these, from what I understand, these here are what set up where the head positioning is for the camera of the person sitting in first person view. Again, that's my understanding of it. That might not be correct. If you know for sure, please feel free to add it in the comments below. So if somebody comes here wondering, it's down there in the comment and they can find the correct information. Uh, this right here, no idea what these do. Same with down here as well. Um, VFX info name. Yeah, have no idea what this stuff does. It's not stuff I, I mess with. I typically just copy and paste from a default Rockstar car. Uh, LOD distance. This is the LODs. Since I am lazy with my LODs and I don't make them anymore, I typically make the first one a pretty high one there so the wheels don't disappear. 
So this is L0, L1, L2, L3, L4. Oh, actually, I think I got one too many on there. Let's get rid of that. There we go. So we got L0, L1, L2, L3, and L4. Uh, this is the minimum seat height. I I do believe that messes with the seat height. Again, I usually leave that as default, so that way it doesn't require a specific value to make the hand sit properly on a wheel. I like to just keep it to rock stars, so that way it's an easy drag and drop. Uh, this stuff right here, I do not know. Other than this is max number of same colors. So this is how many you can see on screen at any one time that has the same color. I leave it at 10. That's what the default is. I try not to uh, mess with that. Uh, swankness. Swankness is like how the peds respond to the car in game. So like if you're in a sports car, this value is changed. So they go, oh my, check out that car. Or they start taking their cell phones out and taking pictures of it. That's what changes that right here. Uh, this, I do not know what it does. Flags. Flags are what are used, and there is a multitude of flags on here. I can't go over each one because there's so many, but there's a lot. If you Google it, there is a list out there that says what the flag is and what it exactly does and uh, what it triggers. There's some flags like for taxi where it turns on a specific extra combination together. There's others where... Like in the case of this, it says flag has livery, so that way the vehicle is known to have a livery and you can change the livery. Flag extra strong, so like in the case of my car, the spotlight and the light bar are strong, so if I crash into something, they're not just going to go flying off the car. Uh, flag law enforcement, flag emergency services, obviously vehicles that are for LEO and emergency services, so they know it's that. Flag no respray, that means you just can't paint it in a, uh, Los Santos Customs. That honestly doesn't really matter. You can probably get rid of that. Uh, flag don't spawn in car gen. Flag report crime is standing on. This one I notice is on all the cars or a good majority of them. I don't know what it does. This one, obviously, if you're standing on it, like it's just like a cop car, it'll uh, give you a wanted level. Uh, vehicle type, I leave it at whatever it is, which in this case is car. Plate type, this is what type of license plate to use, which is just default. Dashboard type, this is what dials you're using in your car. So in the case of the CVPI, uh, generally speaking, most people use Gen Taxi because it replaces police. Whatever script or of dial you're using, which if you look in the file here, I see people forget this all the time too. If you look in here, it says script RT dials Gen Taxi. Make sure you're matching to what you're using in here. So that way, when you use first person, it actually shows up properly. Other thing people forget too, in the YTD, it's one of the only vShare files I noticed that doesn't translate over. Make sure you have your dials in there because then it won't show up at all in the game if you don't. It's a simple, just one texture to put in there. So that's what this one does. That's for your text or for your dials. This one here is for vehicle class, for emergency vehicles, fire, EMS, whatever, do VC emergency, there's SUV, utility, truck, etc. If um, if you're doing a tow truck or if you want to do a vehicle that has lights but it doesn't have a siren, you can change this to VC utility. You're, uh, you're welcome there. That's how you get lights without a siren. Uh, wheel type, this is just what wheels come standard on. You really don't need to worry about this if you already have wheels. Uh, trailers, if it's a truck, you would put the name of the trailers down here that you're able to tow with it. Um, this is also additional trailers in case it can uh, it can tow a different type of trailer. Drivers, this is if it spawns in game what you want the driver to be. In this case, it is the uh, police one or cop one if it's just AI driving it around. Um, down here is extras include, so I believe this is where you can also say which extras you want to turn on, but don't hold me to that. I don't usually use that too often. <coughs> I'm trying to see if there's anything else in here that I know. No, I think that's it. I think this right here, the um, these values over here determine if the vehicle can float or not, but don't hold me to that. I don't do a lot of boats to know for sure. And uh, that just goes over the gist of the vehicle's meta and what I know and what I think might, might be some of the uh, items on there. Next is the car variation meta. 
So in here, the first thing is the model name. Again, it's tutorial, so it's called tutorial. Then you have colors. So the way these are set up, this is paint one, which is usually the body of the car. This is paint two, which is a secondary color. Like in the, uh, to give you guys an idea, I'm going to turn on mine real quick so you guys can see it. I color code mine just so it's easier, and that's how Rockstar does it too. This right here, all this light blue, is paint one. So if you change paint one on in GTA, it's going to change these colors. This dark color, that's paint two. So that's how you get like default black, default white. Let me go ahead and turn that off because that's going to be part of the Carcals tutorial. <coughs> Excuse me. So these here, these values, if you go online and look up vehicle or GTA 5 vehicle color code guide, it'll tell you like if you want a car to spawn black, you can look in there and it'll tell you what the color code is. And in the case of this, it's actually zero for black. So whenever this car is spawned in game, paint one will be black. Paint 2 will be black. I'm going to change this to 111. I believe that's white. So now the body of the car will be black and the doors and everything else that I have as the dark blue should be white. I could have that value wrong though, so it'll be interesting to see when we get in game. Uh, right here, this is paint 3 or not paint 3. This is, um, this is the pearlescent if you want um, paint to to have a pearl or a pearlescent to it like if you want like an orange tint or some, some weird color tint to it I keep it black so that way there's no tint to it and it's just a black and white if you're working with like exotic cars you'll probably want to work with that more this one here is paint four this is typically if you set it up correctly that's why again let me turn mine on oh <coughs> I guess with my CHP car I never did this usually my wheels are yellow that's paint four for me. So paint four, you can have it set up to control your wheels. And I have it defaulted to one. So when the car spawns in game, the wheel is black, but you can change the color if you want to change it. This is paint six, which you would set it up to that specifically, which I think is dashboard or it's trim. It's one or the other. It's between paint six and paint seven. So paint six is known as dashboard trim or dashboard color or trim color and paint seven is the opposite of whatever paint six is and that's used ever since a lowrider update so they can um if you ever play gta online with the lowriders you can change like the pinstriping in the on the seats and like the dashboard color that's where that control comes in now you don't have to limit it to just those things you can put it wherever you want so in an example I use these for my gauge clusters. That's how I get the blue uh, dials for the Ford Explorer like it mimics the one in real life. I use a paint six because I'm not going to change the seat trim or anything like that on a on an LEO car. That is how you do the colors here. This is for the liveries. I honestly don't mess with this. I probably should learn how to do this. So I'm not very familiar with it, but I'm assuming that based on the livery, it'll spawn that specific livery. And then what you do is once you're done here with the item, this ends this one. If you want the car to spawn different colors, you would copy from this item to this item, paste after this item down here, and you can have it set up to spawn as a different color as well. as like another chance of a color change. So if you wanted it to... You know what, for the hell of it, let's just do it. So you're going to copy this, you're going to paste it, and in this case, I'm going to change this so it spawns all white. And then I'm going to do it again, and there's going to be the chance that it spawns all black now. So I have the chance of getting a black and white CVPI, an all white CVPI, or an all black CVPI by doing that. Next is kits. This is for mod kits. This is what you guys see me do for like OCRP Civ cars where like you can change out front bumpers and things like that. That is basically this right here is kind of like the ID for that. I'm not going to be going over that today because we're just talking about non-ELS and, um, and LEO stuff. So when you're not using stuff like that, just go ahead and leave it as zero default mod kit. So that way it doesn't assign a number to it and you don't take up a Carcal ID with it. Um, this stuff here, I don't know as far as uh, the window goes. Plate probabilities. This is the um, what plate spawns on the vehicle. So in the 
in the case. <laughs> in the case of this vehicle, I have it set up to spawn with the SA exempt plate. So that's what this means here. This value here is the percentage that it'll spawn with that. At this rate, 100% of them is going to spawn with an SA exempt plate. You can change that to 50, 25, and then play around with it with other ones if you want to. Down here is the light settings value. You can make your own custom ones. I usually use default Rockstar ones, and I choose from three of them. There's zero, which is just kind of a white light. There's one, which is kind of your old yellowish halogen lights, which is usually what I use for CBPIs. And then two, which I believe is either the white lights again, like zero, or it's like a xenon light. Uh, don't hold me to it. And then finally, the last thing on here, which is important for the next file, is the siren setting. So this is your Karkal ID. So you want to make sure you pick a number that is not picked by Rockstar Games or somebody else, or you're going to have conflicting Karkal IDs. This is the thing that I usually have to answer when people say lights don't work on my packs. It's because they have a conflicting Karkal ID. So... My rule of thumb is I think between 1 to 400, maybe 300 is occupied by your Rockstar. I usually start at 500. So in the case of the tutorial video, I'm going towards the end here. I'm doing 995. I've heard if you do like four digits, it'll work too. I don't know for sure. So in my case, I just stick to three. If four works, you could do four, but I honestly don't know. I've heard conflicting things about it. But... I'm going to keep this up just so you remember that this Karkle ID needs to match or the siren setting value needs to, the ID needs to match the Karkle ID. So we're going to go to the Karkles here. This is the Karkle ID. So this is your Karkles. So you have lights here. Right in here is where you would put like your headlight and taillight set up. Like I said, you can make custom ones. Again, I don't know how those work. So they're just going to be blank like that. And then this is the start of the sirens for an emergency vehicle. So again, the item, the ID value is 995, which it matches with our car variation here. That's confirmed. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of that. I hope I don't have a vehicle in the server, uh, in my server matching that. Name, you can name it whatever you want. I put tutorial so I know what it is. And then over here is a description. I put tutorial. Usually I put like charger or sheriff charger or something like that uh times multiplier don't know what that does don't know what this does don't know what this does this does this does this does so yeah i know this is already going great right <laughs> uh this right here i have no idea what it does either sequence or sequencer beats per minute is what that means value and it's at 900 this is how fast your sirens are set up to flash. Mine are set up on the case for this vehicle at 900, so they're going to flash kind of fast. Um, this is the default for this ID. So this is like any light that doesn't have its own specific one is going to flash at 900. Within the car, each siren ID, you'll see where you can change it for an individual one. Uh, these down here are, I believe, for like wigwags, for like the taillights and the headlights. I don't know how they work. Same with the um, this down here. So I do apologize if you came to this video looking for that because I honestly don't know how it works. I would suggest looking at a Rockstar car and going off of that. Um, so that goes over this part. Now we're on to our sirens themselves. So the way the car calls start is it goes from siren 1 to siren 20. Starts with item and then rotation. So rotation, I don't mess with. This delta value is how you rotate the mesh of the siren. Again, in the car or in the non-ELS video I did for 2021, this is the way that you can rotate the mesh without having to go back into Z Modeler and rotating it. I personally don't like to touch it. You're more than welcome to, but I try to avoid touching anything in here. As you can see, here's this portion right here. It says sync to beats per minute. Value is true or false. You can put false and then it won't it won't sync to this 900 here and then you'll have to create your own. <coughs> Sorry, I've been recording a lot of tutorials so my throat's kind of haggard right now. Um, 
Next is the flashiness section. This is the important section. So, star value and speed value, again, I don't know what those do. The delta value, this is where your environmental light is going to project. So if we go back to our project, if you recall from my previous uh, non-ELS video, this is Siren 1, this is, I think that's Siren 1, you could toggle it off to make sure, yeah, and that's Siren 2, and then it goes backwards. Okay, so Siren 1, as you can see, is going to be projecting at an angle here, the way that I have it rotated. So when your delta value is set up as 0 0.0000, however many there, it's supposed to be aiming forward. I'm going to pull this up here in my guide. It's not going to show up here, but that's fine. I'm going to pull it over here so you guys can see it. I'm just going to leave it up on the screen temporarily for you guys so you guys can jot it down. You can take an image of it. You can open up another window and have it there as a guide. I'm pretty sure there's a Google image out there too of it, but this is the guide that I use. So these are the values that you use based on where you want the light to project. So for Siren 1, for example, it sits here and it's projecting this way. So this is the value I want. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. I'm going to keep this on my other monitor just so I have it there readily available. So for that projection or for that direction, I need 0 0.78539816. So now the environmental lighting is going to project as well as the, um, since I don't, move the rotation and the mesh and I would rotate it within Z modeler instead the light if this was the front of the car right here it's going to project this way <coughs> the start and the speed value honestly don't know what those are sequencer value this is where you get your light pattern again I do apologize this is something I vaguely know and I don't mess with a lot I usually ask my buddy Stoppel to make um, the flash patterns for me for my model. So he is the one that knows this more than I do. I know it's a 32 bit code and I'm sure there's another tutorial video out there that you can use for it. But basically you put in the pattern the way you want it and then you go to a website and have it converted to a hex code and then it changes it to the way it needs to be in order to get that pattern correct for that specific siren. <coughs> um, Multiples value, I'm not sure what that does. Direction value, I don't know. Sync to beats per minute, again, this is just like this one up here. If you want it to be 900, you leave it to true. If you want it to be its own, you change it to false. Corona. This is the intensity that you want the corona to be. This is the size you want the corona to be. And if you're not sure what a corona is, the corona is basically the dummy itself. So this is the corona right here. If I turn this off, that's your corona. <clears throat> Man, I'm sorry. My throat. It's basically the access there. So, again, I'm not going to touch that stuff. I'm going to leave it as it is. Face camera value, not sure what that does, but that's everything for the Corona. Color value, I'm going to pull up my other item that I had pulled up in my non-ELS video. I'm only going to pull it up temporarily for you guys to see here. These are the color values. Since that is a red light, I believe, it's this one here. Yep, it's a red light. I'm going to go ahead and select my color of red. And I'm going to change this to red, which it's already changed to red. So I guess that doesn't matter. Pull that back up so you guys can see it. Intensity value, this is how intense you want it to project out. Light group, I have no idea what that does. <coughs> Rotate value. I believe this is what you use if you, you change this to true, if you want it to be a rotator. Don't hold me to that, though, because, again, I don't mess with this stuff a lot to know for sure. Next is the scale value. If this is set to true, it's going to be scaling up the light itself to the correct size. If you don't want it to scale, you would just set that to false. The... um. The ones that would benefit from this are usually rotator bars. When you um, set it to false, it won't scale up. It'll just stay at the same size. This is your scale factor. And this is what's important as well that can throw your lights off if it's not scaled correctly. Ooh, sorry, taking a swig of water here to hopefully get my voice back up. 
So the scale factor here, I have it marked at a value of 10. Going over here, based on my non-ELS tutorial I did, I used a scale factor of 0 0.1. Or, I'm sorry, I scaled the light mesh down to 0 0.1. That puts the scale factor at 10 in the particle, so I changed this to 10. The default one for GTA 5, instead of doing 0 0.1, it would be 0 0.5 in Z modeler, and the scale factor would be changed from 10 to 2. That's how you do replacement cars for GTA 5. Because uh, Rockstar Games uses 0 0.5. Um, flash value, I'm not sure what that does. Light value, I don't know. Spotlight value, I don't know. And cast shadows, I do not know. So I do apologize for the gap of stuff I don't know. This is just the bare minimum that I do know. Um, and that's it for Siren 1. And then it goes to Siren 2, Siren 3, Siren 4, all the way down to Siren 20. I'm going to go ahead and try to save my voice and change all of these really quickly. And then I'll bring you guys back in when I'm done. But it's going to be the same concept. It's going to be changing the, the uh, color to make sure it's correct. Changing the delta value to make sure it's correct as well. Which on this one is actually the uh, rear corner. And if you did see the non-ELS video, this will be... Th this one may or may not work because I don't recall if I uh, rotated those correctly. Because I... Didn't know off the top of my head, and I don't mess with them enough to know for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these real quick, and then uh, I'll be right back with you guys. We are back. Um, since we only have 14 sirens, I went ahead and did all the changes to the sirens that we have. The uh, If you don't have the name of the siren, like 15 through 20 in your file, which in this case we don't. We only have uh, 1 through 14. You can leave it. In here, it's fine. It's not going to do anything. It's looking for Siren 15, and if it's not there, it just won't use it. But um, if you do have it in there, you need to uh, need to make the changes to those as well. Which, in most people's cases, you guys are going to want to utilize all 20 of them. I mean, Rockstar gives you 20, so why not? So I went ahead and I changed those. I'm booting up my server now. It's the first time I booted it up today, so it might take a second. So I'm letting that boot up now, but... Just to go over what we did, I went through, I changed all the delta values because I had everything else already defaulted from a, a another vehicle pack, but I went through and changed all the delta values so the rotation where the light projects on the environment was done correctly, and I changed the uh, color of it as well. So those are the two things I usually focus on. If I'm using something from an older pack before I started doing this size, I also check the scale factor value. I almost have like a checklist of what I do uh, before I even start doing patterns or anything like that. I'll just come down and I'll be like, okay, all of these are these colors. Uh, check the scale factor value to make sure they're all the correct one, which I only use 10 now. And then finally, I, I do all the delta values afterwards, and then it should be fine. You'll want to leave this open in the event that you... Um, in the event that you mess one up, which, I mean, it happens. It's happened to me quite a few times. It looks like my server might have, yeah, it's starting to start itself up. Oh, yeah, I deleted all this, too. I need to, I need to remove those from the server file. In fact, I need to remove a lot of stuff. It seems like a lot of stuff is erroring out. <laughs> So yeah, I'm letting the server boot up right now. Oh, it's trying to boot up the OCRP SIV cars. That usually takes a second. Okay, now it's on race day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it boot itself up. And I usually know when it does when the, uh, the uh, radar script comes up with a big red uh, text font here. And then what I'll do is I'll close it out. This is... Just how I do how I boot up my server. I don't know anything about setting up or uh, starting a 5M server or anything like that. So please don't ask. I have no idea. I was lucky enough to have a friend help me set up my server for dev, and then I've just been adding to it, and it's kind of turned into this hybrid of dev slash um, a 5PD server. So my server shows that it's up and running right now. I'm just waiting for 5M now to boot up. And then since I have um, 
MVE, I'm going to go ahead and window my game just so it's easier to see and my mouse uh, clicker doesn't go off the screen. So if I did everything correctly, which there's a possibility I didn't. Man, this is taking forever. This might actually... Okay, there it goes. And localhost. If I did everything correctly, we should have a Ford CVPI. I don't remember if I blanked out the livery or not, so it changes colors, but... Um, if I didn't, you'll just see a bunch of grid lines because it doesn't have a paint job or a livery on it. But, um, we should have a CVPI that spawns. It should have a sound to it. It should handle correctly because it's using a default handling line and it's set up for the default handling line. It should have dials that work inside of it as well. And it should have a spotlight that you can rotate and it should also have... Um, a roof light bar, the uh, Wheel and Liberty there that we put on in the previous video to um, toggle on and off. And the lights should work on that. They're, again, the ones that are in the corners in the back, I might have rotated incorrectly, so they may not work. And if it looks like an easy fix, I'll just tell you guys how to do it real quick, but I kind of went over it in the video for that already, so... So we're in my server now, and spawning me, I'm just going to run over here, we're going to spawn in tutorial, there's a tutorial car, um, it, oh, I guess, I think I do recall like leaving part of the paint job not painted, so it did the, uh, it did the all white paint job from the, uh, car variation, so if I go in here to the colors, you can see I can change it, and there's the black, and I could change this to black as well. Um, the other stuff on the template is not deleted, so it's actually using the livery. Uh, for the vehicle options, as you can see, the extra one is already toggled on. So since we have those collisions, there's no glass sitting there or lights, so that works correctly. It's just not sized correctly, which that's okay uh, for tutorial purposes. And then extra two, we have our spotlight, which I saw it move already, so it looks like it moves. If I hit the high beams on, you can see it turns on along with our takedown lights up there. If I turn off the extras, they turn off respectively. And whoops, if I press five on, numpad five on my keyboard and eight, you can see the spotlight is rotating. If I change the time, you can actually see, because it uses a dummy, we'll go to a darker area here. You can actually see the environmental lighting rotating with it, as you can see there. That's pretty cool. The spotlight is actually working with it. I think, though, on the light setting ID and the car variation, I got it wrong. I believe two is your your um, yellow, like, halogen dull lights, and one is actually the um, white lighting here, and zero matches this, too, because this shouldn't be this white on a CVPI. It's usually not the one I use. Okay, so we're going to turn on our lights um, as we got a dog barking near us here. And as you can see, our lights are coming on. The uh, rear corners are not correct. If I had to guess, oh no, there they are right there. See, so see how it's clipping at an angle like that? Actually, that looks like it's not the corner one. Yeah, it's those, hmm, that's interesting. So when you see something like this, it's one of two things. It's either, oh wait, no, that's, hang on. That's the halogen, isn't it? Yeah, that's the halogen, that's why. Okay, so that is, wait, why didn't that stay on? Come on. Bars on, there we go, okay. So, you can see the red clipping through it, which means that this is not rotated correctly. You see a blue one too, which means this rear corner one is not rotated correctly either. So I'll show you guys how I fix that. I'm not gonna show you it fixed, I'm just gonna show you what I do to fix it. Cause you're gonna come across this with your models too. Um, as you get experience, you won't have this problem as much. I mean, I have experience and I'm still terrible at it either way. But as you see, the lights are working. They size up correctly into the light bar as they should. When the lights are turned off, you cannot see them. If you look at the environmental lighting, um, it's kind of hard to, is there, oh, there's a light here. One second. Hopefully I can shoot it out. Oh, come on. There you go. Oh, we got another one there too. 
kind of a bad spot to show this, but we'll get it as best we could. As you can see down here though, um, you can see that the light is projecting in all the directions that it should be in the environment. So this corner light here, you can see red's a little more dominant on this side because that's the corner light there. You start seeing a purple effect here. That's because red and blue are firing off at the same time. So you start getting a purple effect. And then you can see blue is a little more dominant in this corner here, and that's because of that corner light. You can see the same back here too. So even though the mesh of the light is not set up correctly to where you see it, the environmental for it is already set up correctly. So as you see the rotation right here, with that rotation, it's facing in the carcals, it's facing out here with the environmental for the blue. You get the red and blue, which is purple effect from all the backlights back there. And then you get a little bit of red on this corner here from that corner one. Now, if I had lights on the sides, like a red and blue, you would do the rotation by only 90, as I mentioned in that video, and you would see whatever color light you want the environment to project over here. So with that being said, um, those lights, like I said, are not correct. What I typically do is I troubleshoot them by simply going into the model file here. These are the two lights that are having the problem. Whoops, not that one. And all I'll do is I'll rotate by 90 degrees. And then I'll go back in game and see if that works. And then if it doesn't work, I'll rotate it 90 degrees again until it works again. But that's the way that I get it to um, project properly onto the car. So what I'll do is I'd rotate like that. And then you're going to export your model and then move the model in your server and then go from there. But like I said, for the sake of video timing, I'm not going to uh, show you guys the finished result because, I mean, it's literally just two lights that are, need to be adjusted. And that's it. That's how you set up your carcals. That's how you set up a vehicle meta and what the stuff does that I'm aware of. And same with the car variation meta as well. Uh, thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. With this tutorial, I don't think there's anything else I really need to go over in regards to tutorials. So I'm hoping this is enough to get you guys started. And maybe if you want to learn more things, there's... I mean, if you want to learn something else and I know it, leave it in the comments below. And I'll try to respond regardless if I know it or don't know it. And if it sounds like it's something I should cover, I'll go ahead and cover it for you guys. But uh, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching these tutorials. I hope they help you out with your vehicle builds for GTA 5. But until next time, take care.